Well, hey there guys, my innovations back for another video. Um, today, we're working on this machine, and this is a 19, uh, 1988, 1988, or is it 85, I can't remember, yeah it's 88, uh, Briggs and Stratton 3.5 horsepower, I'm not sure what I'm doing with it, <laughs> I'm thinking about converting it into some sort of, um, Horizontal shaft. I'll just sit you down for a moment. Uh, instead of doing it like this, like I've done it a couple of times. In fact, every single time that I've done it, I've done it vertical like that. I'm going to go on an angle on a slanted engine like so. I might even slant it the other way. I haven't decided yet. But uh, it's either a slanted or a complete uh, horizontal like this I was thinking about running, like, running it like that that would probably be easier because I'm going to probably put it into a, a push bike so uh, this is a motor that uh, is a bit of a sorry sorry sucker I suppose I mean it's got a rod knot I'm not sure if you can hear it but, yeah. Yeah. The piston's not actually going up, that's how much. It's not a bad rod knock, it only knocks in certain times, uh, certain circumstances if you will. But uh, yeah, and I was also going to try and use the original carburetor, one of these, just your standard chokomatic. I've got a couple of them. Got another one in here. Got him. Got this one. And if we come outside. I have the remains of another one in here somewhere. There it is. Here's another one if I really want to use it. I probably won't. So I'm pretty sure this one's actually staffed. Anyways. But yeah, anyway, yeah, so I'm just messing around with some projects before Christmas, I suppose. I don't think, I, I, if I want to do it with the, with it sitting horizontal like that, I'm going to have to do something about the PCV, because as you know, if you tip the motor over like that, it'll fill this little valve thingy up in here with oil and then it blows it all through here and we don't want that so I might even block it off and maybe drill another hole up here somewhere maybe I don't know I don't really want to go around drilling holes in my motors um, yeah so I guess we'll see how it goes so uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to experiment with different orientations of mounting. This way is probably going to be the easiest, but it may not work because of the, you know, the valves not getting any oil. I mean, I could open this up and put a. Uh, Sort of like a clean out adapter sort of thing in there and then every so often fill it up with a little bit of oil just to keep it happy as it runs but uh yeah so hmm. all right so i've taken the valve cover off and i'm just looking in there see if uh uh looking in there about uh, crankcase vents i mean this way could like having the, the machine arranged the engine arranged in this direction can and probably will work um, it just means that getting oil up into here could be rather hard because it's you know all the way at the top of the engine so uh, yeah 
but then I don't really, then again I don't really want to have to worry about you know filling it up with oil every time I run it uh, but it's not really a lot I could do so I've already undone the crankcase bolts so I'm gonna go ahead and rip that off right now we can I just sit you guys real quick uh, it's a bit far away but uh yeah so I'm just gonna get my hammer and Got to make sure that the gasket's not you know it's okay um yeah but I'm gonna get, get that off and I'll get back to you alrighty guys I got the crankcase open uh the rod's not as loose as what I thought it would be but you know it's still something but that's okay we're just gonna leave it how it is because you know it's an old engine I haven't really got a new crank so if it throws a rod it throws a rod and it's only gonna be thrashed a little bit so it shouldn't be too bad so now that I actually look into this you can see you got the big hole down there very big hole and you got a small drain hole right here so I'm not sure how I would um, you know cause it so that the crankcase ventilation and all that good stuff doesn't with all the oil and shit doesn't get thrown around so I was then I was thinking what about oil slingers being on its side an oil slinger is going to be something hard to have so I'm just going to set that crank shaft uh, I mean cam shaft and retime it very easy to time these engines engines it's great they, uh, there's a little marker on there I took my finger right in there and you just mark that up with the big one on here and it just goes straight in there like so that's perfectly timed so I was thinking for a slinger just use the original one so long as we sit it on this side it's going to be you know in oil well it should be depending on how high up I fill it but yeah technically it will actually be in oil right there because that's about where they sit I think they're more like here but you know they sit around about here but technically that should be you know in the oil but you know, I don't really want to risk it because, you know, this is quite a nice motor. The bore is in pretty decent shape from what I I think it is. I don't know. It's been a while since I had the heat off this thing. But, uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to mess around with this and I'm just going to think around a bit and I'll see what I can come up with. Hey there, guys. Back here again. Move all the way. So, uh, I've decided... Then I'm going to run it, if you're with me for a moment, like this. I was just looking at it, been looking at it for like the past 5-10 minutes, thinking about how I'm going to do it. Um, this one's probably going to be better, and <clears throat> if I get the oil sling right, I still should be able to flick oil into here. And to prove that I will be able to, is what I'm going to do, so I'm going to build some sort of manifold so that I can run it, and I'm going to leave that off and see how much oil gets thrown in there uh, when we're done it. So, get back to the next problem. This intake tube, at the moment, points at the ground. Like, see that? It's going up and down. That ain't gonna work. So, so what we need to do is we need to get an elbow. I was thinking, what can I use? And I was like, oh, copper pipe. If I got some copper pipe and got this, I might be able to solder this to this. That would be the, the best case scenario, but uh, yeah, that might not work. And I can't put me to a next, next problem. How am I going to get that end to fit in a carburetor? Because it doesn't. It's slightly wrong size. This piece is just a tad bigger. 
just about fits inside it actually. So, hmm. so uh, I'm going to wire wheel both of these parts and then I'm going to bring out the, the big soldering iron, I think it's like a 100 watt or something, 75 watts or something. Get that thing heating up and I'll see if I can solder these two parts together. Alrighty guys. Okay. There you go. Hey guys. Um, using this carburetor isn't looking too, too bright. Because it hasn't got a, um, like a air fuel mixture adjustment like this carburetor here does. With this screw here. So that's what I thought about doing. Is all that this carburetor here needs is to have fuel being uh, here. That's all it needs. So I was thinking, what if I had to get my grinder, chop this whole aluminium piece out of this fuel tank, all the way along here, take that out, chop this little screen off, and put fuel line to it, supply and supplying fuel to it. Could that work? I also thought about uh, I'd have to block off holes in the carburetor here, so I'd block that one and that one off. Otherwise, it'll uh, become a vacuum in there and it won't flow. Um, yeah, so I'm actually going to do that. This fuel tank's not very good condition, so let's chop it out anyway. So, yeah. Well, there we go. I've uh, patched up those holes. Uh, there's two of them, I know. I only thought there was ever one, but there is one there to my thumb, another one here. All been patched up. So, uh, Later on is what we're going to have to do, is we're going to have to locate where those holes are and uh, drill it out so that um, it doesn't cause vacuum to appear inside the carburetor. So we don't really want that. Um, I don't think it will hurt it too much having a vacuum there because if fuel's been sucked out and your fuel's been you know, let back in, and as the float bowl fills, it's not really a float bowl, but it's like a little chamber, as that chamber fills when I turn the fuel on, it shouldn't flood the engine out, um, but the air should hopefully leak out of the, um, you know, out of the jets, but I don't know, let's we'll see how it goes, um, yeah, so I can't really do anything with it until that dries, uh, but yeah, so, I'll set that up somewhere so it can dry, where well, it's not going to get covered in crap, but yeah, so 